Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Wine with Jimmy session. This one is on understanding the region of Priorat for the WSET level three. Um, so this is not a massive section, but certainly an important one. Uh, so at the bottom of the screen, you'll see there running throughout this presentation are all of our social media links. Uh, mine at the bottom left at Wine with Jimmy on Instagram and Twitter, also Facebook, and then my wine school in London at West London Wine, South London Wine, my second wine school in London, and also my wine bar, Streatham Wine House. Um, so we are going to Spain. We are going to the north or northeast of Spain, uh, to the region of Catalonia. And Catalonia is uh, um, the area famous for a, a multitude of things. Barcelona, of course, is at the center of it. Um, and uh, then we have uh, our wine regions such as Cava in Penedes. Um, but we are actually focusing on a mainly red wine focusing area called Priorat. Makes a little bit of white as well, which are quite rare. Um, but uh, yes, a really important one that may be a part of your WSET Level 3 written uh, examination. Um, at the end of this, there is a wor working written question as well that we'll go through together so you can understand what kind of questions WSET may ask in the examination and how you should structure your answer around it. We'll also look at a Google Earth video as well so you get a good feel for the locality. Um, here you'll see in this picture, this is quite a classic look of the area of Priorat, which lies uh, to the north of Tarragona on the coast of the Mediterranean. Uh, in this landscape, which is um, uh, quite rugged looking, uh, it is nestled into the uh, Monsant mountain range, uh, and uh, you often have the backdrop of the Pyrenees behind that. Uh, it is a, um, a landscape where the vineyards are very much on these costas, on these terraces that you'll see in this picture here, dotted around some of the villages uh, centering around Falset in the area of Priorat. Okay, so just to get an understanding of where we are, that is the map of Spain's wine regions, its quality wine regions. Uh, you'll see um, the, the kind of northern border that we have of this area is the um, is the Pyrenees or the Pir Pyrenees in, uh, in Spanish, and that's just here. And that separates uh, Spain from France. So the natural northern border, therefore, is the Pyrenees here for Catalonia. Uh, and then we have the Mediterranean side. Uh, so the Mediterranean is all the way along here uh, on this side. And then it borders land on the other side, on its western edge. And that is Aragon and a little bit of Valencia uh, as well. Um, so we are down in the sort of southern eastern part, sorry, southern western part of Catalonia, uh, looking at the DOCA of Priorat. Okay, so one thing that you will need to understand is that Priorat shares the highest classification with Rioja in Spain. That is the DOCA, the CA standing for Calificada. Um, so therefore, this is a very important area uh, which is producing some of the most recognizable high quality premium wines uh, from Spain. It is very different from Rioja, but you certainly find some wonderful expressions here of a lot of power and intensity. Um, so, as I mentioned, it lies uh, in this mountain range called the Mont Sant Mountain uh, Range, which is uh, just, to the, uh, just to the north of Tarragona. So, basically, the vineyards are on the hills around the mountains north of Tarragona. Um, and the climate that we have here is quite a warm Mediterranean climate as one would expect uh, in this location. The summers are very long here. They are very hot, they are very dry, and of course the rainfall is quite low uh, and often more focused in the winter months. Um, so soils need to be very well adapted here to be order to store some of that white water uh, to, to actually feed the vines during the growth season. Um, so that's our, uh, that's our location. Um, just so you can get a feel for the locality, let's just have a look, quick look at a video. Uh, so we will pop this up here. We'll quickly link this to YouTube. Okay. And I want to show you uh, how the landscape looks and we'll go all the way down to quite a famous winery, which is called the Cartoxia Escaladei. Uh, and Scala Dei makes, um, well, it means stairway to God or stairway to heaven, as it is an old monastery from the 12th century. 
uh, that uh, it as you approach it on the steps, it looks like you're approaching uh, the, the, the kingdom of heaven because uh, you're, of course, gaining in that altitude. Um, so let's have a look at this. It's only about a minute and a half, this video, um, but it'll give you an idea of the location. So there is Spain, and we're going to that north uh, northeasterly part, that Catalonia. Uh, north of Tarragona, you'll see some important towns there like Gratalops and Falset, uh, which are located in this region. And that's looking at the Monsant mountain region, uh, which is a DO in its own right, which is not required for you to know for WSCT level two, uh, level three, but you'll see that it is exceptionally mountainous. Um, and uh, it is, of course, nowhere as big as the Pyrenees, uh, but it forms a very important um, uh, region for us with good altitude uh, behind it and then also protect it from any kind of northerly winds. So that's our Monsant mountain range. Um, and we are going to be focusing just to the south of that, where Priorat is nestled below it. In the background, you can see the Pyrenees. Okay, so now we shall move, here we go, down here into the hills that are immediately below that. And here you'll see vineyards that are sporadically dotted around. Um, you'll see some here in small valleys, um, small river valleys. And we're actually focusing here at Kartoksha the Scala Day, so the Scala Day Winery, today owned by Cordenew. Uh, so you'll see here it's nestled in this valley. Vineyards are located at the front. There's some flatter vineyards there, but you saw on the last camera angle that plenty of vineyards are on steep terraced, steep terraced vineyards. And here you go, here's some of them here. Some of them follow the contours of the land um, and others will uh, be planted like this, which is on the flatter parts of the land, but it's generally very, very steep here. So mechanization is very, very minimum. Um, so let's move on and talk about those key things. One key thing to mention immediately is our soil type here, which is the soil licorella. Okay, so this is, um, this is a sort of a slate and shale soil, uh, which is this kind of reddish copper colored uh, style and it's decomposed slate and shale. So let's pop that down here so you're aware of this. Okay, let's pop this down here. So it is uh, decomposed. Slate and shale. It's a decomposed slate and shale, um, very sort of low organic con uh, component to it, L low organic matter. It's a very poor soil as a, as a top soil, um, but it has this wonderful mica um, mineral in it, which uh, is wonderful because it sparkles in the sun so when it warms up here it sparkles quite a bit so it's, uh, it's full of this sort of uh, wonderful mica soils um it's very sort of fragile and it's very as you can see in the picture very fracturing like a bit like onion skin layering to it so root systems struggle here but they do come through the rock um it's very absorbent of heat uh, so absorbent of heat Oops, sorry. So absorbent of heat, uh, and uh, yeah, and due to the depth, it can retain the water throughout the growing season. So due to the depth, very deep soils, and retain the water during growing season. Okay. Um, so it is a soil which is wonderfully adapted here at, uh, at, at really helping the vines um, just about survive. Uh, the absorbent of heat means the varieties such as Carrenena and Garnacha are very much at home here. Um, they are kept in very sort of warm conditions, which they really need. And then they just need that little bit of water, that smattering of water, which is um, stored in this rock at very sort of um, deep, uh, um, uh, deep layers. Okay, so that is Licorella, the Licorella soils. So that's decomposed slate and shale. Slate and shale is a metamorphic based rock, which is derived from granite. Uh, so it's been pressured underground over time and fractured, as you can see here, but uh, yeah, very important soil in this landscape. Um, so viticulture in Priorat, uh, which we'll need to just mention a bit on. So as I mentioned before, it is found on steep slopes like you saw in the video. Um, these are often be terraces. Uh, they can follow the contours of the land. And they're in some instances, like in the video, you can have some flatter vineyards as well, but they are very few and far between due to the very rugged 
and topographical landscape here. They tend to be bush vines as well because your major two grape varieties are Garnacha and Caranena, which we'll look at in a bit. Um, limited mechanization in this area because of course it's very steep slopes. Um, lots of hand um, pruning and hand harvesting will have to take place here. Uh, so it's, um, it's often quite backbreaking, laborious, uh, and all of these so far are adding up to that first thing there on your slide, mentioning that this is premium wine land. You really don't get that many uh, um, sort of cheap, inexpensive wines from this area due to the fact it's very difficult to produce grapes. Um, the grapes also are very low yielding. So the, the vines are very low yielding uh, due to the very poor soils, uh, the nutrients within your topsoil. They're old vines as well. Um, you tend to have quite a high percentage of old vines and also um, quite a low water supply. So your grapes tend to be much more smaller and compact. So all of these things, lower yields, older vines, um, limited mechanization, hand harvesting, hand pruning, and then bush vines on those steep slopes. All of this adds up to wines being remarkably premium here. You could also add in, if it was to ask a general question, the winery side of things is that often oak, oak is used and new oak will be used for the fermentations and or maturations uh, as well. Your key grape variety here then is Garnacha and also Carrenena. Um, in your textbooks, they really only go into Garnacha in detail. It is found in the red wine making section early on in your textbooks, but also, of course, is mentioned here in the Spanish section and in the Priorat section of your textbook. Uh, Garnacha is a variety which hails from Aragon originally. So that's this area, really, Aragon, Catalunya. That's where the biggest ge genetic diversity is of it. And of course, it has made its way into a number of countries around the world. It is called Grenache, of course, in France, and there are many others, but you are not required to know them for your level three certificate. Um, we do have some wonderful videos on uh, key grape varieties. There is an advanced version on Ganacha that goes into a huge amount of detail about its history, its ampelography, and so on. So well worth a, to have a look at that. It is a bit above your pay gra grade for WSET level three, um, but it gives you a great amount of information about the variety. Um, so bush vines of Garnacha here in those poor Licorella soils, often old, will produce wines that are quite high in alcohol, tend to be in the lower side of acidity, though the higher altitudes here do mean that you get a bit of brightness. They're full bodied and they have often softer tannins behind them. Garnacha is a relatively thin skinned grape variety. Uh, so therefore, it does not tend to um, give too much color or tannic structure. Um, it is an early budding and late ripening variety. Uh, so it needs to be planted in warm climates like we have here, the warm Mediterranean climate of Priorat. Um, other places, of course, it's found is in La Rioja, uh, places like Chateauneuf de Pape, Vacaras, the Southern Rhone, those kind of areas. Um, has a very high tolerance to drought, and of course the water stress is quite high here, and also is quite wind tolerant as well. Uh, planted in the Gobelet, as we mentioned before. Um, here in uh, in Spain it's called Envaso, uh, but it is the Gobelet, the bush, fan, uh, the bush vine, freestanding bush vine. Um, has uh, uh, quite a few mu mutations as well, Garnacha, Gris, Blanc, etc. Quite productive and with higher sugar levels. And look at the aromas we tend to get. Lots of bright red fruit, strawberries, raspberries, cherries, red cherries, um, white pepper, cinnamon, spice, uh, and often you'll find some oak, certainly in wines around Priorat. These are some of the more complex and concentrated versions of Garnacha um, in the world here due to its uh, low uh, production numbers because of its low yielding older vines. The other great variety I've put up here um, is Garanena, which is the second most important variety, um, but it's not mentioned a great deal in your text. So this is a bit more for uh, your own information, just because it is very key, I think, in, in crafting the style of Priorat wines. Garanena um, has good colorful skins, uh, which produces good color, good tannins, and it also has good acidities. It's a great 
blending partner here in Priorat with Garnacha to add more complexity. You'll often find it pr produces the darker fruits, the blackberries, the black cherry characteristic and brambly notes, often a little bit of chocolate and spice as well, uh, comes through with Karenena. Uh, you may know that Karenena also has a multitude of other names. Um, one of its names, which is a name from in La Rioja, is Mazuelo. Um, so that's one name of it. And it's also called Carignan in France. So let's put France there. Uh, and I'll put uh, Rioja just there for you. Okay. Um, so two, two alternative names of it. Um, now, Carignan in France is often quite a high yielding, big production grape variety, often makes some of the simplest wines from the Languedoc area uh, and the Roussillon. Um, but it can make some very fine wines out there too with its low yields. Um, in, uh, in La Rioja, it is used as a blending variety to add what's in that line, that sentence there, color, tannin and acid. And here in Priorat, it's certainly the same. It's old vines of low yielding fruit produce these powerful, um, complex and dark styles, often adding that intensity and weight behind the Priorat wine, whereas the Garnacha tends to add the alcohol and the fruit, the red fruit and spice characteristics. So these two great varieties really are the backbone of Priorat, but there are others permitted as well. Um, some producers do use Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot and Syrah, uh, as well as some other local varieties in their blends, but it really is about these two varieties, Garnacha and Carinena as the major ones. So a few questions. So you are able to understand what WSET may ask of you in a written theory examination. Uh, and uh, we'll go through it together so you can understand this. So Garnacha is a key grape variety in the Priorat DOCA. What conditions in the vineyard make it such an important variety here? So why does it do well in, these, uh, in this area? Why is it so important? Garnacha is a late ripening variety, as we talked about. It needs a long season, it's early budding and late ripening, that requires a lot of heat in the warm Mediterranean climate of Catalonia. This is possible. Summers here are long, hot and dry, a perfect combination for Garnacha. In addition, the geology here, so the soils, is licorella, and that retains heat creating longer ripening conditions as well. Uh, so really that's one about climate, uh, weather and soils, uh, its locality, its microclimate. State and describe four reasons in the vineyard or wineries. Always make sure, please, that you fully read the question here. I see so many students that uh, if it just states vineyard, they start talking about winery things. If it just states winery, they may be talking about vineyard things. But this one is all inclusive here. So vineyard or winery, why the wines of Priorat are premium and expensive. So four reasons. So each of these will carry two marks. So you really need to state and describe your selection. First up, um, bush vines on and steep slopes mean the vines must be tended to by hand and that creates more of a cost. Uh, so it has to be looked after with bigger, more skillful labored teams. The low nutrient soils produce lower yields um, of very high quality, but very much lowering the production. So that of course means that the wines are more scarce. They don't produce them as much. The older age of the vines produce lower yields as well. Um, it is normal, not always, but it is normal for most vines as the vine comes into um, maturation and becomes 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, that they start to produce excellent fruit, but lower amounts of it. Uh, so um, it kind of matures the vine as it gets older. And in the winery, often new French oak is used to ferment and or uh, mature the wines. Uh, and in some instances, American oak will be used as well. But the costing of French oak, certainly new oak, is very expensive. So this would add to the final price point. Please don't include anything here to do with um, the market, uh, the 
the kind of um, prestige or anything like that because this is about the vineyard and the winery nothing to do with market forces or supply and demand okay so that has been your video on Priorat from Catalunya in Spain. So I've been Jimmy Smith of the Wine with Jimmy YouTube channel. We have many, many more of these understanding uh, certain topics for WSET Level 3 to help you and guide you through your examination. Please check them out uh, on our Wine with Jimmy YouTube channel. We also have an online portal which all of our students at West London and South London Wine School gain access to. Uh, if you are not a student, however, you can purchase a subscription to be uh, a part of this. A huge amount of flashcards, um, questions, mock questions, multiple choice, uh, very useful, and more videos as well. Uh, so please do get in touch if you would like to gain access to that. Um, so I've been Jimmy Smith at Wine with Jimmy, West London Wine School, South London Wine School, both here in London, United Kingdom, and my wine bar, Streatham Wine House in Streatham, London, United Kingdom. Um, next time you're in London, please come and see us for a glass or a bottle uh, or a class uh, at the school. So cheers. Thank you so much. See you very soon. Goodbye.